the low fat minnow, the baby fat minnow. There's a lot of fat going on. But guess what? The sculpins are here to play and the sculpins are here to stay. This is the low fat sculpin and you need it in your box because it's a crusher. Dude, that was good. That was like used car salesman type. Okay, this is it. This is the low fat sculpin. You know the low fat minnow, the baby fat minnow, the fat series flies. I think there's a sculpin finally worthy of this. Um, we did the sculpin toad and it's a great fly, but it just takes a long time to, to tie. Still tie them, still fish them. But this is kind of a, a method that I had a dream about of all things. Came to work, didn't even say hi to anybody in the door, and I, I started playing with it. So we've had a little bit of time to dial it in, and we'll just get started. This is a fully mill streamer stripper size two. And uh, you can just use whatever thread you like. I, I'm, I'm tying it with a 140 denier. Um, black's fine, it really doesn't show up too much. And right in the middle of this, I'm gonna put a five millimeter tungsten B or tungsten barbell eye. So this is a tungsten barbell eye from Fulling Mill, um, and it is pretty aggressive. And the reason why we put it pretty far back is so that this fly won't dive nose first too bad. It should just glide down. So get that all nice and set, and it absolutely does need to be on this side of the hook because this will ride inverted. All right, so once we have that, we're going to dab a little super glue in there. Spill a little bit on Curtis's desk. All right, so this is one of my new favorite products. It's the Squish Anil from Hairline. Um, just got a lot of movement to it. So I'm just gonna make the body out of this. Um, this olive color actually is UV fluorescent. So um, kind of a cool color. So we'll tie that in, and I'm gonna take my thread all the way up. We're gonna leave a little bit of space of pretty bare hook to tie in our rabbit and our our head. So wrapping this up the shank to about here. Trim that off. And you see how that just makes a real nice easy kind of bulky body. Um, can't wait to use that for buggers and stuff. All right so I have a magnum zonker strip in like the olive variant. Uh, this is going to be the tail. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tail and I'm going to stick my scissors in it. Let's see if I can show you kind of like this and trim. I don't know if we can see that. I think we can actually see it. Trim that about this far. Okay, I'm gonna do that the other one off camera so I can actually see what I'm doing. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just thinned out the strip on the back. That really helps it with the swimming. So I'm gonna make the tail about that long, okay? Um, don't worry about it having a long tail. The fish that's supposed to eat this will be able to swallow it in one eat. So shouldn't have too many short strikes on this one. Um, I'm going to create a spot to tie, tie down that rabbit strip. Just right here. And then the cool thing about these Renamed scissors is I really can get the blade just barely under that skin and cut it without cutting any of the hairs. So very, very precise cuts with these scissors. So I'm going to tie that down and I'm kind of creating a little bit of a band of thread right there. That's important because we're going to tie in two little tabs that will look like pectoral fins for this. These are fins, Brigham. Sorry people, we've been on a debate about what is a fin and what is not. All right, so I'm gonna take this whole zonker strip, but this time you can see how it's tapering down. So I wanna take the part that's tapered and I'm gonna tack that on right on the side of this fly. We'll trim it later, but it's easier to tie it in the whole thing um, because you can hold it exactly where you want. Then when you have it tied in where you want it, you just stick the tips of your scissor in there about, I don't know, three-fourths 
the way down the body, we're going to trim it. So we just have a tag of rabbit. We're going to do that on the other side. All right, so I'll trim that other tab roughly the same length. And now we are ready to make this into a sculpin. We'll clean up any little stragglers that have come here. I'm going to moisten my fingers and try to get that rabbit out of the way as much as possible. So look at the shape already. It's wanting to turn into that flat, sculpin shape. So we're going to help it do that with some Bruiser Blend dubbing. I'll take some uh, brown olive and that's going to go on the top and I'm going to take some pale lemon which is all really light yellow and that will go on the bottom. So I'm taking this dubbing and I'm just kind of preening it and aligning the fibers. I'll take it and preen it, roll it in my fingers a little bit because if you don't do this and just tie in a clump, a whole bunch of it will pull out when you start brushing this. So here I have my piece of bruiser blend. I'm going to tie that in with most of it going out over the hook eye. Really tight wraps here on this. It's got to stay in when we, when we brush it out. All right, so that's the top piece. We're going to turn it upside down and we're going to do the bottom piece now. Same program. Okay, so I have those two pieces tied in. Now I'm going to flare those out just a little bit so they kind of look like this. I'm going to push the front one back, bring my thread up, pull the bottom one down, and then just bring my thread in front of those pieces and tie my thread off and whip finish. Okay, now if you look at the, the head of this fly, it just looks terrible at this point, okay? So it's our job to fix it. We'll put that back in the vise like this so it's a little better for the camera. So to get the, 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 the dubbing to cover up the holes on the side, you just kind of grab the dubbing and roll it back and forth a little bit, and that will help the dubbing to kind of cover up all the parts that it missed. Once we have it to this point, I'm going to take a small comb and just kind of brush out the bruiser blend, rotating as I go, and it will just kind of make a nice little minnowy looking bulky head. Okay, so once I have it like this, preen it with my fingers just a little bit. Now, this is the part that you're going to have to just find the best way that works for you. But I'm going to use resin and I'm going to use my finger to spread it. If you're allergic to resin um, gloves or, you know, you, you mean this, this is a fly that you absolutely don't have to tie if, if resin screws you up. My good buddy Tim Flagler, I know we were tying together and anytime I pulled the resin out, he'd have to leave the table. So it's, it, I mean, I, it's a real thing. I'm, I'm just going to brush it with my fingers, um, but I'm just going to put a little bit of resin out like that and then just take my fingers and spread it all around and just kind of build up a little bit of, of a rigid surface with the, with the resin. If you put too much on it first, it'll mat down the head and clump it up. So I just put a little tiny bit in there brushed it around, and before I put more on, I'm going to cure this one. So I'll do that one more time with a little more resin. Just 
just kind of dot it around and then brush it with your finger again. And Squatch is in the house now making a bunch of noise. All right, so cure that one one more time. Now we can start forming the head. Also, look at look at that, uh, the olive squish in here. It's UV reactive. Very cool. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start on the bottom, and I'm just going to pull that back, and it's going to look like this. Okay? So I'm going to find kind of the center with that barbell eye. And then I'm going to take my, and this is medium viscosity solar as it's perfect for this. And I'm just going to create kind of like a, I'm going to saturate the bottom of the head because that's probably going to come in contact with the bottom the most. And I also want to kind of tack it to these barbell eyes. The top of the fly will have a lot more movement, but this I really want to lock down. So once I have it there, I can lock it in place. All right, now, so we need to, we need to build the, the top of it, okay? So it's looking pretty good now. I just need a little bit more resin. So we'll put a little more resin, get it distributed with our resin distribution device. And also, you'll you want to get like some hand sanitizer or something, because that's the best way to get the the, the sticking up stickiness off your fingers. I think everybody's got a few thousand bottles of hand sanitizer. All right, so for this part, I'm going to kind of use both hands and squish the the fly from the side, and also push it down from the top a little bit to create the head shape that I want. That's that's pretty good, right about there. So once I have that starting to take shape, I'm going to just add a little bit of resin at a time. And you don't want this to be totally soaked with resin. You want the head to move. Um, and yeah, this, this fly, you know, you might crack it a little bit or, or something, but you can actually repair it. Um, so if you have any spots that you're not happy with, you can kind of just mold it with your fingers. Um, so as you can see, we're getting a pretty decent sculpt and profile head with this. And you know, the, the hook comes out right, right, kind of even with the head, but the way the head works, it's going to push down. And so you have a lot of hook gap. Um, to hook those giant browns that you're going to catch. All right, so one part of the fly that I always see comes apart is on the sides. There's there are little cracks, so you can just come in here with your with your resin and put that in between those cracks and just kind of weld the head together um, to make it more durable. So I mean, you can spend a lot of time getting this head to be absolutely perfect, but you know, for what we're doing, this this is perfect because it just it'll keep a wide profile, and uh, you know we don't have we don't need it to be absolutely perfect, not even for a video. Okay, so sculpins have little tiny beady black eyes, so we're gonna add some of those. You know what, I need a little more resin though. Okay, now for the eyes. Well, before I do that, I'm gonna get some of this hand sanitizer in my hands. And I'll just rub that on my fingers. There's a good chance you got a bunch on your your bottle as well. So when we're ready, we're just gonna take a black marker and I'm going to just make a little black mark on the side of the head. 
a little bigger than I think the eye is going to be on both sides. I actually need to fill a little gap right here that that eye would have gone in. Okay. So when I'm ready, I'm going to pull out the thick resin and I'm just going to glob up a, a little ball of resin on each one of those eyes. All right. So with a bodkin, now I can take this and I'm just going to take the bodkin and kind of run the eye one way and run it the other way. Turn it into a, like a little oblong eye. So you can see how that has a little bit of bulbousness, but not like a, you know, a fake stick on eye or something. Do it for the other side. Looks like I need a little bit more on that side. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now, at this point, you can you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Um, this solar as colored resin, I actually like to take it and add add a little bit of like modeled dots on the top of the sculpin. So I'm just going to kind of touch it in there, make it kind of dirty. Sculpins are dirty. All right, cool. So there we have it. That is the low fat sculpin. And uh, fish it on a on a sinking line, a floating line, any type of line really. But that's kind of how it looks, you know, in the hand. It's it's a really good taper. Um, It'll keep that shape in the water, maximum rabbit, so it'll move like crazy. Anyway, we're stoked about this one. It's gonna catch you a big fish this summer.